General Settings is going to be split into three separate lessons so we don't have a single super long lesson on it. We'll go section by section here. First is About. In here we can find basic information about the Mac, such as what chip and how much RAM it has, the serial number, Apple Care coverage, what version of Mac OS it's running, along with built-in or attached displays and built-in storage. We'll cover display settings in its own lesson later on. Click on System Report down here to view a very detailed breakdown of the Mac's hardware and software. For the most part, the only time you'll need to open this is for troubleshooting purposes. Next, we have Software Update. This only applies to Mac OS updates not for any apps that you've downloaded from the App Store or installed from the web or even a disk. To update apps, we can go into the App Store app and the Updates section. Click on the Info button here and we control whether or not system updates will be downloaded and installed automatically. If you only want to do updates manually, these can all be turned off. Keep Check for Updates on to get a notification when a new update is available. I tend to leave these all on and let the Mac stay updated on its own. Next we have Storage Settings. This is where we would end up if the Storage Settings button is clicked from within the About section. This provides a quick way to see how much storage space is available on your Mac and how much storage space each app is taking up. This only applies to files stored on the Mac's internal drive, not in iCloud, any other cloud storage service, or on an external hard drive. Click the Info button next to an app to see more details. For some apps or folders, we can remove files associated with them from right here in Settings. In this case with music, I could clear some storage space by deleting these music video files. In AirDrop and Handoff, we can completely deactivate both of these features. For more on how to use both of these, refer to their lessons in the first section of this tutorial. Below, we can choose who can AirDrop items to this Mac. Everyone, contacts only, or no one. To avoid any airdrop span, switch this to contacts only. Next we have some AirPlay receiver options. Every Mac can now receive media over AirPlay from another device like an iPhone or iPad. So if you have a video on your iPhone that you'd like to see on your Mac's display, the Mac will appear as an AirPlay option as long as the AirPlay receiver option is turned on here. To stop just anyone from sending AirPlay audio or video to your Mac, set Allow AirPlay for only the current user. Setting this to anyone on the same network, or everyone, will make your Mac available as an AirPlay option to a lot more people and devices. If you select one of these, it's a good idea to then require a password for AirPlaying to this Mac. We can choose any password we want, and if anyone then wants to airplay to this Mac, they will need to know this password. Lastly, in this section, we have login items. Any apps in this list are going to automatically open up when your Mac starts up or when you log in to this user account. Click Add, and we can choose any of our installed apps. So now, next time I start up this Mac, both Mail and Calendar will open up automatically. Below we have apps that need to operate in the background. A good example here is Backblaze, which works in the background to keep this Mac backed up online. If I were to turn this off, that backup process wouldn't happen automatically. I tend to keep all these on unless there's something that you don't recognize or if your Mac is having performance problems. Turning off background processes like these can be a good troubleshooting step. Here in the second section of General Settings, we have Language and Region, as well as Date and Time. 
In Language and Region, we can set the preferred language that macOS will use. Currently, my primary language is English. Click Add and we get a list of languages that can be used. I'm going to add Spanish. We then get the option to make this the primary language on the Mac. So let's do that. For this to fully take effect, we need to restart the Mac completely. But if I force quit the Finder and relaunch it, Spanish is then used in Finder windows and menus. To return to English as the primary language, I can just remove Spanish from this list and then set English as primary again. Next, we can set our region. Changing this is going to cause some of the settings below to also change or be added to. If I switch the region to Chile, the date format will change and a number format menu is added as well. We can adjust all of these one by one too. We can change the calendar type, what temperature or measurement system we want to use on the Mac, what the first day of the week is, and our date format. The date format options will reflect the calendar selected above. Next we have the option to deactivate live text. With this feature on, we can extract text from an image in the Photos app, Preview, and other image apps. In this photo, as I hover over the words, a text cursor appears. Click and drag to select the text, and it can then be copied and pasted elsewhere. If you don't want this to be possible, turn it off here. Lastly, we can customize what language is used in a specific app. So if someone usually communicates in a different language in messages, that can be set up here. Next, we have date and time settings. With this activated here, it's going to be set automatically. And below, we have an option for where to get that information, known as a time server. Time.apple.com is the default, and I've never had any reason not to use this. But there are other time server options out there. If this automatic option is turned off, we can then set the date and time manually here. We're also able to switch to 24 hour time. Next, we can set our time zone automatically or manually. If you work remotely out of an office that's in a different time zone, it might be better to just set the time on your Mac to match theirs. So if I select Detroit here and exit this panel, the time on the Mac is moved ahead one hour. I personally always stick with the automatic time, date, and time zone settings. This last section of general settings starts with sharing options. Leaving the sharing options that you don't use turned off can make your Mac a little bit more secure. So I currently only have one option activated, file sharing which when on will let me share a specific folder or folders on this Mac to other computers that are on the same Wi-Fi network. Having this turned off isn't going to prevent you from being able to use AirDrop to share files or sending files via mail or messages. So we're not going to go through every one of these, but we're going to cover a couple that could apply to a lot of users. First we have printer sharing. If you have a printer plugged into this Mac via USB, turning on printer sharing will allow that printer to be accessed by other computers on the same network. Most printers these days can be accessed wirelessly anyway though, so for this to be needed, you might be using an older printer or you might not be on a Wi-Fi network. Next, internet sharing will essentially make your Mac a Wi-Fi hotspot. If you're somewhere that happens to only have a wired internet connection available, the Mac can be plugged into that, and with internet sharing on, it will create its own Wi-Fi network, so other computers and devices can access that Mac's wired internet connection. 
Notice that we're able to set a name for this Wi-Fi network and a custom password. Next, we have Time Machine settings. With Time Machine, we can keep our Mac backed up hour by hour, as long as your backup drive remains connected. I have two separate external hard drives set up as Time Machine backups on this Mac. One is currently attached and ready to back up. The other drive is one I, that I only connect occasionally and save in a safe place for an offline backup. Click on the Add button here to set up a new backup drive. Click Options and we can set the backup frequency for Time Machine from every hour to every week. Or select Manually and you will need to click Backup Now from the Time Machine menu bar item to start it. We can also select folders on our Mac that we don't want or need to be backed up. Doing this can save space on the backup drive. For much more on using Time Machine, take a look at our Mac backup tutorial. Next we have a transfer and reset panel. If I get a new Mac that I want to transfer the data from this one to, the best tool to use is Migration Assistant. It can also transfer data to a Windows PC or to a Time Machine backup disk. Once that gets done and you're ready to sell or trade in a Mac, we can click Erase All Content and Settings. Doing this is going to remove all the data from the Mac's internal drive, and it will essentially reset it back to how it came from the factory, ready for a new owner. Last, we have Startup Disk. This is going to display the drive that macOS is currently running from. It's possible to have multiple startup disks connected to one Mac, and we can start the Mac from any of those. This can be done by using an external startup drive or having multiple partitions on the internal drive. The vast majority of Mac users are never going to need to worry about using another startup disk. Again, for more details on some of the subjects that we've been touching on the last few lessons, take a look at our Mac Backup, Utilities, and Security tutorials.